In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Behringer Ultra G Direct Box, the GI100 Direct Input Box. It's an active DI box, and this DI box has worked really well for me for many years. And the question is, how good is it? I think it sounds good, but we're going to find out how good it really is by putting it on the audio analyzer and measuring its performance. Now, there are two versions of this box out in this family of direct input boxes. This is the GI100. It comes in a red case. There's a companion to it called the DI100, which is just about identical, but it comes in a silver case. And the differentiating factor between these two is that both of them are active direct boxes that should pass a clean signal through it from a musical instrument into your sound system. But the GI100 version, the, the red one, also includes an additional filter. It's called a virtual cab simulator. And it's a filter that makes electric guitars sound better, according to Behringer. The idea is that if you were to connect the speaker output from a guitar amplifier into this box and feed that signal to your PA system, you'd be getting the sound of that guitar. But what you wouldn't be getting is the sound of the speaker that's in the guitar amplifier. And we know that the speakers in a guitar amplifier have a lot to do with the tone of that amplifier. And so the speaker is going to only be able to reproduce some of the mid-range of the guitar. Uh, the guitar amplifier speaker is not going to be able to reproduce extremely low bass or extremely high frequency sound. But if we just tap an electric signal before that speaker and run it through the box, we would get that really deep bass that might just muddy up the sound of the guitar a bit. And we'd get all of the super high frequency stuff coming through, which might just be noisy or it might make the guitar sound overly brittle and not so pleasing. And so in order to emulate the sound of that guitar coming through the guitar amplifier with its loudspeaker, there's a button on here called Virtual Speaker Cabinet Simulator that provides an equalization curve that looks somewhat like a guitar amplifier speaker, according to Behringer. And so we're going to run this thing through the analyzer, the uh, audio precision analyzer, and do a frequency response plot to see Will this device change your tone any? Does it have a flat frequency response that doesn't accentuate any particular parts of the frequency band? And what exactly happens when we turn on the guitar amplifier speaker emulator? What curve does that provide for us? And so we'll measure the performance of this device to see just exactly how good it is. This is a relatively affordable active direct box. And so we'll see how good the performance is. And based upon that, we'll see if this represents a good value or not. Now, in my experience, I think it's worked pretty well, but we'll see exactly how well it really is working. Let's take a look at the measured audio performance. 
I put in a 1 volt peak to peak signal into the GI100 direct box with the direct box in standard straight through mode and measured the outcoming response on a sweep from 20 to 20 kilohertz, which you see right here. As you can see, the output is extremely linear, a very flat frequency response, meaning that it's not boosting or cutting any particular parts of the frequency band. So your instrument, as it goes through this box, should not have its tone changed one tiny bit. Overall, there's a gain of about 2 dB from the input to the output. That's okay. There's an extremely slight roll-off below 50 hertz, which only represents a couple of dB. And so there's going to be no changes to the sound of your signal as it passes through this direct box. I was surprised at how flat this curve is. It is almost ruler flat, extending all the way up beyond 20 kilohertz. I expected that I would most likely see a little bit of high frequency drop off, but I didn't see any. So I told the analyzer to redo the sweep all the way from 20 hertz up to 200 kilohertz, way beyond the end of the audio band. And that's what we're looking at right now. So we can see where the high frequency finally does eventually drop off on this unit. And we see that it has almost ruler flat, perfect frequency response, extending all the way up beyond 50 to about 70 kilohertz before the high end starts to begin to drop off. And that is, of course, far beyond the audio spectrum. So I would say that that is quite impressive audio performance. Now we did another sweep from 20 to 20 kilohertz to check the frequency response. And we turned on the filter on the GI100 that enables guitar amplifier speaker emulation. So this is a tone shaping filter that's supposed to make the unit sound more close to a guitar amplifier speaker. And as you can see, it puts in a high pass filter at around 100 hertz or so to cut out all of the low end energy and a low pass filter that comes in at about four kilohertz to cut off everything above that point. So it cuts out all of the deep lows and cuts out all of the high highs like a guitar amplifier speaker would. And then we see that there's also a dip in the mid range at about 600 hertz of about 4 dB. So that is the resulting curve that gets applied to your signal when you turn on guitar amplifier speaker emulation. This curve shows the distortion and noise of this device in straight pass-through mode without the speaker emulation turned on. And it looks quite impressive. You'll see that the distortion figure is better than 0.05% across most of the audio spectrum. And so I would consider that to be excellent audio performance that should um, pass your signal through it without any frequency response changes. So none of the different frequency areas of your instrument get accentuated or diminished. And the distortion is vanishingly low. So whatever you put into the input side of it should come out the output side of it very clean and clear without any modification whatsoever. It should render your instrument very well. Now this chart here is distortion and noise versus frequency with the guitar amplifier emulation switch engaged. Now we see that this chart comes in a little higher point, a little more distortion. And I think that's because when you turn that mode on, you can hear a bit of background noise come up in the unit. So maybe what we're looking at here is largely noise driven rather than actually distortion. But at any rate, the numbers are still quite good. And in this mode, chances are you're going to be plugging into a guitar amp at any rate, which is going to have distortion figures that are orders of magnitude worse than what we're seeing here. And so I consider this to be excellent performance. Well, I thought that the results of our audio analysis of this GI100 direct input box were interesting and quite good. So based upon the performance that I'm seeing measured 
on this device, I get the impression that it's going to do a pretty good job of rendering your instrument without changing your tone. It should work really well, and that's been my experience in its use. So the question is, is there a reason to purchase a different DI box at a higher price point? Well, you might find other products that have mechanical construction you like better, or perhaps some features that are different, but in terms of performance, looks like this works pretty well. So if you're interested in picking up a GI100 or the companion product, which is the DI100, which I believe is just about identical with the exception of that loudspeaker emulation switch that this unit has, I'll put down links below where you can pick one up for yourself. I hope you found the video interesting, informative, and if you did, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel because that helps YouTube promote this content to more people and it helps this channel grow and I appreciate your support. So thanks for tuning in once again and I will catch you on another upcoming episode.